Hi everybody. Uh, tonight I want to talk about the nitrogen cycle a little bit more. I want to talk about it in depth. Um, I've spoken about it before and I've thrown a few different scenarios out there that may, you know, be a real world scenario that might present problems for you that you might not necessarily think would cause problems. Uh, the example I've used a lot of times is if you suddenly reduce your bio load. Um, a lot of people think, well, that's good, right? I've just taken half the fish out of my tank. That's got to be good for my tank. And that's not necessarily true. That can really cause a crash in your tank and throw your nitrogen cycle way out of whack. Well, I did something recently that I absolutely should have known better. And in fact, I do know better. Um, but nonetheless, I did it. Um, just not thinking. And it was a very, very costly mistake. I lost my blue phantom pleco. And I know exactly what I did, and I know exactly why he died. This is not any kind of mystery, and it was 100% my fault. Um, so my mistake hopefully might save your fish if you have a little better understanding of what's going on with your nitrogen cycle. So I'm going to use this to give you a real-world scenario of how you can kill a fish by doing something very, you know, unthinking. The way your nitrogen cycle works is you have bacteria that lives in your tank. It lives on surface area. Um, the best example being the sponge thing in your hang on the back filter or the beads in your aquarium, your biomedia, whatever. That's just providing surface area for this bacteria to live on. There's two different species of bacteria. And the first species feeds on the ammonia that is produced in your tank. And its waste product is nitrite. Uh, the second species of bacteria that lives in your tank feeds on the nitrite and its waste product is nitrate. The nitrate itself is not harmful to your fish or your animals, but it is an organic compound which we don't need to get into at the moment, but it has associated impacts to your tank. It does do things in your tank, just not immediately and directly to your fish. Um, the ammonia and the nitrites are immediately and directly harmful to your fish. You cannot have these building up in your tank or you will start running into problems really quickly. Now, I've spoken about this many, many, many times and this is why this video pains me to do. I just, I'm embarrassed to do this because this is such a bonehead mistake. But, again, nonetheless, this is going to be a lesson for us all of how easy this can be to do something really, really bad. Um, I had a sponge filter in the far right-hand corner of this tank, and I did not like it. I didn't want it in there, but I had it in there nonetheless. It was running because, at the time, I needed it. So I recently switched over to this external canister filter, which is more than over capacity for filtration of this tank, bio-filtration of this tank. Uh, so I decided that I was going to remove the sponge filter. I didn't need it. So at first I left it in there just because it was already an established, cycled in uh, biomaterial and until I was 100% certain that the canister filter was cycled in, I was going to leave this already established uh, sponge filter in there because I'd, re I'd removed the established hang on the back filters. I actually did a video about installing this on, on this tank. Um, so, I left the, the sponge filter in there deliberately knowing it was critical to my nitrogen cycle. It was housing lots and lots and lots of trillions of bacteria that I needed in my tank. Um, enough time went by that I knew I didn't need it anymore, but it was something that needed to be done all at once. When I was going to get it out of there, I needed to like do a good big tank cleaning and maintenance, and I was just going to do it all, uh, trim the plants, get the filter out of there, get the sponge out, the whole nine yards. Well. I kept putting it off, kept putting it off, kept putting it off, and eventually uh, it was a situation much like this. It was about 9 o'clock at night. I wanted to shoot a video, and the stupid air pump that powered that also powered, it was a twin um, hose pump, and I also had an air-powered sponge filter going on in my African tank, and this one air pump ran both filters. Uh, and it was just a, it was an obnoxiously noisy pump. I don't know if it was defective or it was just running too long. Um, but this camera really, really picked it up, and it was just really obnoxious. So I, long story short, I said, well, I'll just go ahead and unplug the damn pump tonight, and I'll shoot my video, and in the morning, I'll go ahead and I'll pull that sponge out of there, because i got to get it out of there once I stop running the water through it. Um, now, I'm going to stop right there for a moment, because I want to talk about how I always go into the idea of treating the 
nitrifying bacteria, these bacterial colonies, you have to treat these like they are members of the community of your tank. You have to provide them with proper living conditions in order for them to stay healthy. So here's where I went wrong. Well, here's the first part of where I went wrong. By discontinuing the air pump, that stopped drawing water through the sponge. The sponge just became stagnant. Well, the bacteria that are in there are both dependent on the ammonia that's in the water, the nitrites that are in the water, depending on the species of bacteria, and uh, oxygen that is in the water. This is oxygen-dependent uh, bacteria. So this stopped flowing. All the food stopped flowing past this bacteria. So this basically all the bacteria in this sponge started dying. And I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was a consequence of shutting off this filter. And this is part of where my personality, or personality defects, whatever you want to call them, uh, come into play and, and can cause me issues. Um, I really have a terrible sense of time. This goes beyond simple procrastination or whatever. I really meant to do this. I just really did not keep track of how much time had gone by. I kept telling myself, well, I'll get that filter out of there tomorrow. And, and I just, I don't know what I was doing or thinking, but I don't even know how long went by, to tell you the truth. It was probably at least a week, maybe 10 days, maybe 12. I don't know. Um... Long story short, I just left that sponge sitting in there, my African tank as well. So, I, I even did major work on other tanks while still looking at that sponge and thinking, it's only been in there for a day or two, it'll be fine, I'll get to it tomorrow. Um, so, I come down one day and my blue phantom is lying in an odd position, in an odd place in the tank that I'd never seen it before. Alarm bells go off, I got enough experience with this to know he was dead. Um, so, obviously, sure enough, he was dead. So I started checking the water, and the first thing I see is that I've got about one part per million nitrites in the water. My ammonia was fine, um, my nitrates were through the roof, but they always are in this tank, that's not an issue. Again, the nitrates themselves do not hurt your fish, uh, that even, a, even something as, as sensitive as a blue phantom pleco, I was not concerned about those nitrates at all. But that one part per million or less, it wasn't even quite that much, was enough to kill that blue phantom pleco. So if you're going to keep fish that are really, really sensitive to water conditions, if you're going to try to keep discus, for example, you need to be just so strict with your routine. You need to be so regimented and so organized. And I'm just not. That's just not my personality. So what I'm coming to find out, I know this is a little twist off of the nitrogen cycle aspect of this um, video, but what I'm coming to find out is, like, I need to take that into consideration when I'm considering the kind of animals I need to keep. I have the skill set to keep things like discus, but do I have the personality, the lifestyle, the responsibility, even, you know, just am I scatter too scatterbrained to do it, or am I just forgetful? Um, discus are those kind of fish that you can't really let the pH shift a little bit, or you can't go too long between the water changes, or whatever. Um... This blue phantom is the same way, and I did this unmistakable or just unforgivable mistake of leaving that filter in there and just letting time get away from me to the point where I really honestly do not know how long I left the sponge filter in there. Um, so what was happening when the sponge filter was being left in there? As these um, bacteria are breaking down, these bacteria, are, or it's organic material, it's organic waste now that is breaking down in my tank. So they went from being trillions of bacteria that were actually eating the ammonia and removing the ammonia from my tank to now suddenly becoming a source of ammonia in my tank. It was a one-two punch. It was a double whammy. Um, while suddenly blowing up the ammonia production in my tank, I simultaneously reduced the tank's capacity to deal with ammonia. Now, fortunately, as I said, my new canister filter is a really mac daddy big canister filter, plenty of overcompensation, and that did allow me to keep it to a minimum. I will say the one upshot, if you want to call it that, out of all of this is the fact that uh, my Blue Phantom is such a sensitive fish that while it was a very costly canary, it was the proverbial canary in the coal mine. Being as sensitive as it was, it died very quickly by exposure to that very low level of nitrites 
whereas these more durable fish, and I'm really surprised because I've got several loaches in here, and I've got some pretty sensitive fish. I've even got a hillstream loach in here, um, and I'm not to say I'm out of the woods either. I might have done enough damage with the exposure that in a month from now I might lose my hillstream or maybe some of my loaches might go. Um, the blue phantom, however, is so sensitive that it died rapidly. And because it did, it got me in there, it got me checking the water, my alarm bells went off, I found the problem immediately, obviously got in there, did a massive water change, got that filter out, went right to my African tank, because my African tank's got a black ghost knife fish in it, which is equally as sensitive. Uh, fortunately, um, none of the... Uh, parameters of my water in my African tank were the slightest bit off. There was no ammonia, no nitrites, no nothing. Everything was fine. So I was able to get that sponge out of there, do a water change, get the tank cleaned up, recheck all my water parameters. Everything's cool. Um, no sweat with the African tank. Uh, this tank, however, I lost my Blue Phantom. Uh, again, just... I, I really love that fish. I've lost several really expensive plecos and really, really cool plecos over the last year. Um, Again, these are very, very sensitive fish to water conditions and water chemistry. And I do these water chemistry videos because I've learned, and I've learned this hard way. <laughs> um, this was stupid. This was a nitrogen cycle disaster. This was not a water hardness or a sodium or one of those kind of disasters. Uh, this was just a really bonehead mistake of me leaving a filter sitting in a tank. Uh, I literally left a giant, dirty sponge filter sitting in a tank. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that that's going to do bad things in your tank and when you've got fish sensitive like blue phantoms you, you just don't get away with that you know my garamis are a little more more tolerable so again if that blue phantom hadn't died and i maybe hadn't checked the water maybe when i've come down here in another day or two and seen all my garamis swimming around funny and sideways because it had gone beyond the tank's capacity and i suddenly was having ammonia build up I don't know, but the blue phantom dying was the alarm bell. Again, very, very expensive canary in the coal mine, but it served its purpose nonetheless, if you want to say that was its purpose. Um, anyway, that's my video, I guess. I just feel like I'm starting to ramble at this point. I'm really frustrated with myself for doing this, but once again, I've made a dumb mistake, and hopefully somebody will have learned a little bit of a lesson by that. You've got to take your nitrogen cycle seriously. You've got to treat the bacteria in your tank as though they are a part of the community. You have to understand their needs and you have to be able to meet those needs. You have to give them the proper amount of food, oxygen, etc. I'll keep doing these videos as long as I keep getting good positive responses, as long as people are learning from them or whatever. I'll keep documenting good and bad. So give me your feedback. Go to the section below, uh, comment section below and uh, let me know what you think. Um, and hopefully I will see you soon. Please like, please sub. That way you won't miss any updates. And uh, we'll keep on uh, keeping on. I'll do some more uh, water chemistry videos real soon. I do have one video I'm going to do about uh, nitrates in your tank specifically very soon. So stay tuned for that one too. All right, we'll see you soon, everybody. Thanks.